Dear brothers and sisters, our readings today are both about saying goodbye properly. The Filipino word for goodbye is paalam. Literally, it means magpaalam, let them know. Meaning, you don't come for a visit in somebody's home like, let's say, you attend a party and then you just disappear like a bubble after you have eaten. That's very impolite, not just in Filipino culture, but in any culture. You at least let your host know when you are leaving so that you and they can say proper goodbyes to each other. Perhaps in the context of this pandemic, the beso-beso can be omitted and replaced by flying kisses or a bow with right hand on chest or just a wave of the hand. We have many ways of saying goodbye. In the first reading, St. Paul is about to leave the province of Asia Minor. He is in the coastal town of Miletus. Perhaps he was there because he was about to board a boat. But he found the opportunity to meet with the leaders of Ephesus to say goodbye. Listen to what he says. I am sure that none of you will ever see me again. And so he gives his parting words. You know, something like a last will for them. In the gospel, Jesus is doing the same thing. He is also telling his disciples that he is about to depart. And he also entrusts some parting words like a last testament. You know, my own late father who died in 1980 wrote me a beautiful letter a few months before he passed on. I don't know why of all his 13 children, were seven boys and six girls, he entrusted the letter to me. Perhaps because he knew that I was going to become a priest. I was not ordained a priest yet at that time. I remember I was immediately in tears when I read his first two lines. He wrote the letter in flawless kapampangan and his hand was obviously shaking or trembling because of his health condition. He said, My dear Ambo, I know that pretty soon I will be leaving you already. I thought maybe before I go, I should leave you some parting words. And so I decided to write this letter and entrust it to you. Of course, I will not tell you what the letter contained. Suffice it to say that it was not about properties. It was not about the typical what goes to whom in holographic wills. He just said, I do not have much to leave behind as inheritance for you. I thought your education and formation as good human beings was the best kind of inheritance that I could give to you. And I know that you will know what to do with whatever little that I am leaving behind because I am confident that you will take good care of your mother and of one another. He closed his letter with the following words. After reading this, I want you to seal it again and keep it in some secure place where you will not lose it. And when I am gone, after my remains have been buried, please gather your siblings along with your mother at home and read my letter to them. With all my love, your father. 
In Filipino, we would call something like this a habilin. Yes, something like an entrustment. Something of a last will and testament. It's just too bad that nowadays, last wills and testaments are usually too focused on properties. Sometimes, even with a written will already, some families get split up and end up suing each other in court when they feel that they have been disadvantaged in the partition of their inheritance. And when such things happen, you would wonder if the parents are not turning in their graves or not regretting that they even bothered to build a fortune only to cause such painful conflicts in the family. Well, St. Paul and Jesus and my own father left parting words, but they were not about material things. Incidentally, there is a family that is presently attending this online Mass this very moment. They are the Lontok Testa family. They lost their mother 40 days ago in the time of the COVID pandemic when the lockdown had just begun. They were not able to grieve together as a family. And so this Mass is their only way of being virtually together to honor their late mother, even if they are residing in different places in the country and in different parts of the world. Thank God for digital technology that we can transcend time and space. To the members of the Lontok and Testa family, if you're listening to me right now, I would suggest that after this Mass, you meet each other by Zoom and carry on the conversation, answering something like, if Mama had left some words or some parting words, what would she have said? It would be nice to carry on the conversation. You know, there is a song that was composed many decades ago. It was sung by a pop singer who sang Tagalog ballads and country music. I don't know if you would even remember her name. She was called Coritha. If I am not mistaken, I think she composed the song herself. She sang the song in a pop music festival called Likha Awit Pambata. Just a little parenthetical remark. I actually joined that contest myself. I submitted an entry which, unfortunately, did not make it to the finals and marked the end of my musical career. But I must say, the winning piece really deserved the first place. I fell in love with it myself. Up to now, I'd memorized the lyrics, but in Filipino, of course. It was entitled Habilin, literally an entrustment or a testament. And they are the parting words of a parent to his youngest child. I tried to translate it into English. And here is what it says in, you know, an approximate way. It says, Dream of a beautiful world, my child. Whatever it is that we did wrong in our time, you must try to set right in your own time. Strive to do your best always if you want to fulfill your heart's desires. Do not let your dreams remain as dreams. That was a mistake. 
that we often made ourselves. Always seek for wisdom. Never stop learning your life's lessons. Not all that we taught you was right. Your place is here and your time is now. It is not like the time and place that we knew. No wonder there were times when we could not see eye to eye with each other and we realized why, but only much later. And the final verse says, Always heed the call of your country. Alone, you will not achieve your goals. In isolation, you won't reach your destination. You are part of the world. Share your victories with others. That's where we often fell short ourselves. And in between these three verses is a refrain. And the refrain is even more beautiful. It says, Tomorrow, you will reap both the good and the bad that we planted. In due time, you will discover that the future is in your hands. Wherever we stumbled, there you must rise. And whatever it is that we did right, let it linger on and light up your path.